verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Let us sing our hymn of adoration, Holy, Holy, Holy. As we gather here in your name, O Christ, you are already among us. Keep us open to your presence in us and around us, that we may grow closer to you. Amen.
Let us prepare ourselves as we come to God in prayer. Let us sing our prayer song, You Are My Hiding Place. Before the our imperfections and 
Father, we pray and we ask that in the name of Jesus, as we come before the throne of grace, we acknowledge and we confess our sins before thee. Take away, O God, all the things that causes us to be unworthy before thee. Take away every stronghold, every foothold of the enemy upon us and grant not only forgiveness, but grant to us a repentant heart, O God. Let there be changes, transformation upon each of us, believing in your promise that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So Lord, thank you even for the assurance that as we confess our sins, you are our faithful God who is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we present to you our request. As you've said in your word, do not be anxious of anything, but by prayer and petition, we are to present our request to you with thanksgiving. We pray even, O God, for this nation, Philippines, as we face this crisis, Lord, the present crisis upon this nation, the pandemic, Lord, we pray for your divine intervention. We pray for guidance even for all the officials of this nation O god grant them the heavenly wisdom the knowledge how to deal this pandemic and abba father i pray nga hatagan mo gid sang langit nga nga kaalam ang among nga presidente and even down to the lowest position they're not only facing this crisis lord may ara pa damo nga problema ini nga nation i pray be with them oh god and let the presence of these uh, officials of this nation a blessing and of help a big help lord uh, to every filipinos and i pray their father uh grant us the solutions of all these concerns and be at work mightily O God upon every leaders of this nation and Father I pray na do not grant them only the solution but I pray also dear Father be at work man sa ila individually turn this uh, present pandemic Father into a blessing to this nation and we pray even dear lord for your church that at this moment of pandemic father allow lord that we will rise up make a distinction that we are your children and you are our god as you have protected lord your chosen people may you protect continually also your children those people father who trusted in you and those people who believe in you grant lord that you will empower each of us use uh, this opportunity father to win more souls to lead more people to christ grant us the boldness and grant us father uh, the privilege to share to them the message of salvation and Use us mightily, O God, for your greater glory and honor. Bless even the Father, our worship service and celebration today. Allow your Holy Spirit to be at move and grant, O God, that every words that we are about to speak today, grant that these words of yours will not return empty, but it will be a blessing to every listeners. And Abba Father, Grant us a spirit-filled worship service and celebration today. And bless your people, Father, as we worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray, uh, I don't know kung ano ang mga problema sa imong mga kaanakan today, but we know, Lord, that even before we ask, you already know what we need. I pray, O God, that you will meet their needs. May you grant the desires of their hearts and grant, Lord, that not in accordance 
to our will, but let your perfect will be done accordingly. O God Almighty, into your hands we commit, surrender, everything. Our family, our loved ones, our spiritual family, and even our works, O God, and everything in us and through us. And Father, allow your Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, direct us. And we ask all these things through the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Makita sa Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 to 33. It says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. O God Almighty, we thank you for the privilege to listen to your words this morning. And I pray, O God, open our spiritual eyes and ears and allow, Lord, that we may be able to understand uh, your message and allow, Father, that these words of yours will not return empty to each of us but it will serve its purpose and help us dear father not to be content to be just listeners but help us to be a doer of your word so lord we pray and ask all these things through jesus christ our lord we pray amen so our message this morning we will be talking about call to commit now to start I would like to ask uh, two specific questions. First, pamakutunato ng atong kaugalingon. Are you committed to the Lord Jesus Christ? Kumusta ang atong commitment sa iya? And I hope nga makasabat kita sina nga pamangkot with a resounding yes. If so, it brings me to a second question are you committed to his church 
We know, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we live in a day where few people like to commit anything, a job, a marriage, a friendship, a team, a school, and even to a church. Perhaps, nagakahadlo kita mag-commit because may ara much better para sa atong paminsaron or because may hurt na kita sa past. Uh, and probably we like the leisure of being able to come and go without any string attached or because we reason that this is just a temporary season of life or probably hindi na to nakita ang importance in being committed. My prayer is for us to see biblically why it is important to commit ourselves to the Lord and to His church. Many come to believe that the church is about them. It's for their comforts, preferences, likes, choices, etc. As a result, many attend a local church primarily for their own benefit and pleasure. Pagsulod nila, ano kaya nila simbahan, basi nagapanukot ni siyang tithes and offering, or magasiling sila nga gaserba kaya nila sila sa akong gusto or ano kanami ni nga simbahan uh, amog ba ni ang akong style nga panibahon nga gusto ano kanami ang ilang nga leader di ano man kaya ilang nga pastor uh, mauyunan ko ba kaya ang batasa sa ilang pastor, sa ilang mga leaders or may ara ba sila para sa kids ministry or fitted ba ini sa mga student, students ini nga simbahan or ara ba ni sila sini o amuna o amuni So when it comes to church, does the Lord really accept our self-seeking mentality? Is that really what He wants from us as His followers? Is that even healthy? Is the church really to be about what we want? Or should it be about what God wants? Through this sermon, I believe that God will call us away from this self-seeking mentality and call us instead to to focus on commitment to His church. So, diin kita masugod. We begin by looking at our Lord Jesus Himself. What was His mindset, actions toward the church? We found out in Ephesians chapter 5, the passage that we read today is extremely popular because it has been shared at many wedding ceremonies. Paul explains clearly that he is talking primarily about Christ and his relationship to the church. And Paul then uses the covenant of marriage to practically illustrate this wonderful relationship. So often when people think of a church, they think of a specific building or the place that group meets. But there is much more to a church than that. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which means an assembly of called out ones. So in other words, the church is not a building, but a body of people who have been called out from darkness into light, out of sin into salvation. So all who believe na nagapati sa atong ginoong Jesus as Lord and Savior are part of the church. Now, there are two key parts of the church. First, may matawag kita nga larger church. Ang ibang ginatawag ini nga universal church because it is comprised of every person from every generation, <clears throat> from every nation who have believed in Jesus Christ for salvation. As a believer at salvation, you became a part of the larger church simply through faith in Christ. Now, then second, there is a local church. The local church is described as a local body of believers that covenant together in mission, discipleship, and fellowship. And there are some who will argue that membership in a local church is not that important. They will say, Hindi ba pwede na sa larger church na lang po? But the problem with this argument is that it is greatly ignoring the truth of the scripture. In the New Testament, the word church is used in reference to a local body of believers. In fact, there is no way that a believer can fulfill God's commands 
concerning the larger church without a direct connection to a local church. So, pamangko, why should we commit to the church? Because we see this modeled by Christ. So, I want us to make three observations about Christ's commitment. Una-una, the position of Christ in the church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, Naghambalda, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. So, in the church, Jesus has a clear rule. The text says Christ is the head of the church. So the fact that Christ is the head simply means that he is the leader. He is the ruler. Another name for the church, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30, For we are members of his body. So we are members of his body. The we referring to all who are Christians. Of course, makita natin ang body, damo parts, and damo man members that contribute to the function of the whole. So as the body of Christ, we are directly related and connected to the Lord. And I'm privileged to serve PTMP as the senior pastor. But please understand that there is only one head, and that is Jesus. As a pastor, I'm called to be under shepherd and an overseer. Pero sino ang akong sundon? Kag sino nga direction ang akong sundon? Pwede ba sundon ko kung sino ang pinaka mas mabaskog na tingo? O ang popular nga opinion? O ang current nga trend? O ang pressure ba sa government? O sa mga nagakumod nga mga membro? Pamatian ko ba? Or sundod ko ba kung sino ang pinakadako sa hatag sa simbahan? O ang secular na culture? The answer is clearly no. There is only one who is worthy of being followed. Only one who has the authority to command. And there is only one who has the wisdom in every situation. And that is Jesus. He is the head of the church. He is the commander-in-chief. So as a church, we don't function on the basis kung ano ang makapamaayo lang sa itong pamatyagon, kung ano ang popular, or even kung ano ang atong ginagap paminsan, but rather what God says. It must be clear that in the church, there is only one head, and that is Jesus Christ. I am thankful for the authority that Christ has, but I am also thankful for the hope this brings. As long as Jesus is the head, we can have the assurance that we are going to be just fine. Since He is the head, the question that every church and every Christian must consider is very simple. Are we following the Lord? Are we surrendered to Him, His authority, and His leading? Now, second, the provision of Christ for the church. One of the primary roles of a husband is that he is to be a provider. He is to work hard to provide for the needs of his family. That's why being the father of the family, bisan may tiyon nga makapoy man, matindogid, mabangon to work. Because as a father, it is our duty to provide the needs of, this, of the family. So in that thought, Paul now directs us to the things and the ways that Jesus has provided for the church. And I will list them in five ways. Una una, the compassion that he showed to the church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25a, naghambal da, just as Christ loved the church. So the first thing that Jesus did, did for the church is that he loved the church. The love that describes Jesus here is agape, which is the sacrificial, unconditional, faithful love of Christ. So this kind of love is described in 1 Corinthians 13. It is patient, kind, not jealous, is not arrogant, doesn't act inappropriately, isn't selfish, isn't provoked, doesn't hold on to offenses, rejoices in the truth. So this type of love never fails. So this love puts the needs of others before, before oneself. So Jesus clearly do this now be 
the cost that he paid for the church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25a gave himself up for her. It is because he loved us that we see the next point. He loved the church and because of this love, he gave himself up for her. So the praise gave himself up literally means that he surrendered himself. He gave himself completely for the glory of the Father and the good of the church. In other words, it wasn't about what he wanted or even what he deserved. He willingly laid aside his rights for the benefit of the church. Philippians 2, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8 explains, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Now, in Christian settings, it is so commonplace to talk about Jesus' death on the cross that we can take for granted all that he endured on our behalf. Pero, lantaw na ito, no? Sino makafatom sa grabe niyang agony kag distress sa nagaluhod siya sa Garden of Gethsemane sa pagpangamuyo. Makita nato nga grabe ang iyang ginabatsyag to the point na nagapamalhas na siyang sang dugo. In grief, he cried out in Matthew chapter 26:39b, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. So, ma-imagine natin no, kung, uh, kung paano siya nag-torment sini. So, he even then concluded, Yet not as I will, but as you will. He willingly gave himself sacrificially for the good of the church and the glory of the father. And he gave himself up for us because he loved us. See the cleansing that he gave to the church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. In verse 23, we learn that Jesus is our Savior, which means that he is the one who rescues us from our sins. Here in verse 26, we learn a second thing God does at salvation. He cleanses us from our sins, thus sanctifying us. And this is a beautiful truth. It is an act of mercy to know that we are spared from the wrath of God when we are saved. What great mercy God shows us to not give us what we deserve. But then we see how amazing His grace is through the fact that He washes us clean. He no longer holds our sins against us because they have been covered and cleansed by the sacrifice of Christ. Siguro mamakot kita paano kita natinloan. It is through the word of God. We are made clean by our faith in the word of God. And this is why Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 15 verse 3, You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Because they receive it by faith, they were made clean. Our text tells us specifically that through this cleansing, all who believe in Christ are sanctified. So this means that believers are set apart by God and for God. And we are set apart to be holy and consecrated Him. Paul uses the marriage relationship to illustrate the point. Just like uh, during our wedding ni Janice, naghambal ko I do, kagsama nagsiling I do to me. So at that moment, we were set apart to one another. And literally, as part of our vows, we devoted ourselves saying, forsaking all others. The point is that we were set apart from others and to one another. The point of this passage is saying that Jesus gave his life for us to save and sanctify us setting us apart that we would not live for the world but only for him now d the commitment that he shows to the church ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 next thing present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless so let me explain 
We are set apart the very moment we believe. If you believe in Christ for salvation one minute ago, then you have already been sanctified. It is an experience that has already occurred. But Jesus that doesn't just sanctify us and leave us there. He continues to work in our lives. So like a married couple that works out the vows they have made, Jesus is fully committed to us to work in us, to mold and shape us in His image. So in other words, it is not, it is not just about what He has done in the past, but what He continues to do in our lives today. He is fully committed to us. He is working in us so that one day we will be presented without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Siguro nag-ara ta sa stage, nag-struggle kita because we are on the process na gina-change, gina-transform, amat-amat. As time we will be worthy nga kuha o na kita sa ato nga ginoo. Kag magpuli na kita sa langit. So in the care that he gives to the church, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 to 30, naghambal the husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wives loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. So how does a husband cherish his wife? Paano? Magacheris ang husband sa yung wife. He listens to her, to her. He puts her needs above his own. He seeks to serve rather than being served, and he seeks to give rather than receive. Again, who is this really about? It's about Jesus. This is how he cherishes the church. He meets here with us, hears our prayers, and answers according to his plan. Assures us of his presence guide us in his word comfort us in our afflictions and give us joy for the journey yes jesus cares for the church now third the priority of the church ephesians chapter 5 verse 24 it says now as the church submits to christ so also wives should submit to their husband in everything so what does all of this mean how should this impact us today what we see in Jesus' actions should convict us to respond. He is bringing us to a place where we examine our lives and answer the question honestly. Am I committed to Christ and His church? I believe this text should lead us to three clear priorities. A. Love Jesus. It's very simple, but we must start here. So 1 John 4, 19 says we love because he first loved us do you love jesus remember the love that he calls us to is selfless and sacrificial in other words if your love for jesus is all about you your needs your happiness your whatever then it's not really jesus that you love if you love jesus it will be demonstrated by putting his will his call his desires above your own. Makita natin ganun is Jesus no? because of his love for his father. Makita natin siya mga prayer na not my will but your will be done. And the same with us. Hindi na dapat aton na gusto kundi ano ang gusto sa ginoo sa aton na kabuhi. So if we truly grasp all that he has done we can't help but to love him. Be Submit to Jesus. The word submit here literally means to yield oneself to the will of another. This is a military term that means to arrange under in rank. The voice of the verb means that the submission is voluntary. It means that God doesn't force you to submit and surrender to Him. It means that you of your own will choose to subject yourself. When you truly know that Jesus is Lord of your life, you will have no problem surrendering to Him. And see, follow Jesus. The love Jesus has for the church is expressed clearly in this passage. He loved the church so much that He gave Himself sacrificially for her. He cleansed the church through the ministry of the Word. He committed Himself to the church to continue working in us, 
to make us blameless and he continually cares for us and meets our needs this is jesus actions uh, action toward the church our affection attitude and actions toward the local church should model christ's affections affection attitude and actions toward the larger church so just as christ loved the church we should love the church just as christ sacrificed for the church we should make sacrifices for the church just as christ cleansed the church with his word we cleanse each other with the word it all starts with relationship with christ it leads to a place of recognition and surrender to him as lord in our life it results in a deep devotion to christ and the church that he willingly gave himself for may god help us today and in the coming days to heed the call to commit amen as we celebrate the lord's supper let us sing our hymn of preparation let us break bread together let us break bread together on our knees let us break bread together on our knees when i fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh lord have mercy on me let us drink wine together on our knees let us drink wine together on our knees when i fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh lord have mercy on me let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are reminded always that because of the love of the Father, He gave His one and only Son to die in our behalf to pay the price that we are supposed to pay. And He suffered for us and He gave His life for us. So at this moment, let us take the opportunity to come before Him every lord's supper we are reminded of his word that we must not take this in unworthy manner so whatever things now wala pa natin confess at this point of time let us come to god in prayer and confess it Thank you, dear Father, that as we confess our sins, you are our God who is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of our, our unrighteousness. And thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you, dear Father, for even for this time, for the privilege to remember you, what you have done for us, and to be reminded how much you love us and care for us. O oh God, Almighty, as we celebrate this Lord's Supper, bless this bread and this cup that symbolizes the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can say, take this and make this a blessing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This bread symbolizes the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take it 
in remembrance of him. This cup symbolizes the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ poured out for the remission of our sins. Let's drink together and so remember Him. Let us pray. We just praise and thank you, dear Father, for what you have done for us. And it is our prayer, Lord, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to work in us and through us and let your death and sacrifices of God be not worthless to us but allow Lord that every time we celebrate this Lord's Supper may we always cherish what you have done for us and that through this uh, remembrance oh God we will always be reminded to live a life that delights upon thee a life that is pleasing and acceptable before thee a life not only a blessing to ourselves but a live a blessing to others and a good testimony to others so lord uh, thank you for what you have done for us in jesus name amen for our announcement Ang nabili nga celebrant for the month of September, si Jade Absin sa September 8. Sa September 29, si Paul Cesar Absin. Advance, happy, happy birthday and may our faithful God continually and richly bless you. In closing, let us sing our hymn of commitment, Take My Life and Let It Be. sa sininga kabuhi kabay pa nga usaro namon ini nga kabuhi for your glory and for your honor and Lord continue to work in us and through us 
and make us worthy always to be called your children, worthy also to be called your servants. Holy Spirit, continue to mold us in the person that you want us to be, continue to lead us, continue to guide us, and grant, Lord, that as you bless us with this life, make this life, Lord, na hindi namun sayangon ang kabuhi na ginhatag mo sa amon. But we will use this life for your greater glory and honor. That as we end this worship service this morning, grant the presence, the blessings, the favor, and grant, Lord, that in, even in the midst of this pandemic, cover us all with the precious blood of Jesus and continually bless even your children and continually bless the works of our hands and continue to make us a living testimony of how good and how great you are in our lives. Lord, gamita ini nga kabuhi na through this life, many will come to know you even as their personal Savior and Lord and make us a channel of blessing a channel of salvation. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the, and the continued presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and remains with you. Amen and Amen. Amen.